Hello from my studio in Murfreesboro. I've got something really special planned for you today. I've been really wanting to do a paint pour video for a very long time. Uh, pretty much as long as I've been doing paint pours, which is going on over a year now. And I've seen so many on YouTube. I've even taken one of my daughter Sunday, which you can find on my channel. And so today I'm going to attempt to take you along on my creative journey and we will just see what we make and how it turns out, all right? So um, the first thing I'm gonna show you is all of the things that I have ready. Um, and you'll notice that it's kind of haphazard and so you can make adjustments uh, that work for your studio. So I've got a couple of masterpieces that I worked on the other day. I was trying to do uh, what Pour My Heart Out calls a ghost pour here, and then this is my other attempt, which it turned out okay, but I wasn't really thrilled with. I thought we'd get a little bit fancy and use some uh, discarded wine goblets from my last painting party. I've got a number of blank canvases, paper towel tube, which is gonna be fun, paper towels. I'm going to be wearing gloves today because we're going to be working with an additive called Floetrol, which I don't want to get in my um, skin. And I'm going to be using the latex-based Floetrol to level out our pins. I've also got a fun uh, piece of wood here, some tools like a palette knife and a fork. I've got some blocks of wood that are small that I might paint on, but I also like to just use them to prop up what I'm working on so that the paint has a place to drip down underneath. And you'll also see I've got some uh, paper in my boxes. There I've just got some regular old paper and you can see the drips from my last project. And in this box I've used some um, canvas paper. And so when the drips go on here I may be able to salvage that and turn it into some cards. Here's a few that I have uh, done that very thing with. So I just take the drips of paper and I turn them into these fun greeting cards and these will be going to the Muggle Masquerade Diagon Alley event over at the um, Chesapeake Public Library at the end of the month. So you may have taken a little gander at my painting outfit and I use these colors to inspire um, the choices that I have ready to get mixed up. And then I have this awesome uh, picture that my cousin sent me. And I'm going to be using these colors to kind of interpret that really awesome uh, picture that he very thoughtfully sent me to interpret. So I'm going to go ahead and get my camera kind of set in one place and then I'll show you how to mix up our paints and our fancy wine goblets. All right, so I'm going to get my gloves on. And the first color that I'm going to mix up is uh, it's going to be some black. And so the ratio that I use, oh, I didn't know this glasses had a little funnel in the bottom. It's going to be different. Okay, so the ratio that I use when I'm mixing my paint and Floetrol is basically a one part paint to two parts Floetrol mixture. And so however much paint I put in, I'm going to put twice as much Floetrol in, okay? Now I don't do math, as you know, if you've been on my channel for any amount of time. And so this works for me. And I also don't do measurements, uh, and I don't have a little measuring cup. So what I do is I just pour equal amounts in. And... The trick really is just to do whatever you do consistently, okay? Ooh, got a big globby. Don't want that in there. Ooh, so Floetrol does have a glue consistency, and you will get some globbies like that. And if you leave them in your paint, you'll regret it because the paint will not flow over the globby. So once I get this in here, then I'm going to mix it up. And I mix, and I mix, and I mix, and I mix. And I like this part because it kind of makes me feel like a mad scientist. Especially using a goblet like this. <laughs> Just in time for Halloween. Alright, so you can see that there's no white, but 
if I turn it on the outside, I can still see the white of the flow troll. So I don't want that. If I see that, that means it's not mixed up all the way. So I've got to mix and mix and mix some more. And the other thing is that when it gets done, you want it to run off pretty liquidy, okay? Again, the key is not that yours looks like mine. The key is that you have consistent results with all the paints that you're using. Close. All right, so I just also mixed up the yellow and I'm gonna move on to some antique parchment cream color. And now I'm gonna mix up this color shift. And the color shift does not have really good coverage and I'm not gonna use very much of it. So I have some already mixed into this little vial. I'm just gonna add to that. Uh, but it creates a really pretty kind of pearlized sheen. And it's a little bit more expensive than the other paints, which are usually about 50 cents. This one runs, geez, it might even be as much as like two or three dollars. I can't remember. I got it at Walmart. They have a number of different colors that you can get. In our next pour, we're gonna be using um, a red color shift. And basically, like I said, it's got like a real pearlized metallic sheen to it. And it's just, it's fun and it's sparkly. And um, I've been living in the South now, so I have learned to sparkle. Okay, that one gooped over my hand a little bit. I'm kind of crazy with the mixing. Okay, that green that I used, the last time I used it, I also had um, put a little bit of silicone in there. Okay, now this is a dragonfly glaze, and it is a blue-green-gold shift. And I'm going to experiment with adding this to some black. Okay, so I haven't done this before. It's going to be a little experiment. And I'm just going to take some of that black that I already mixed, and I'm going to mix that in with the paint and the Floetrol. And we will see if we can tell any difference. So I'm really getting kind of experimental here today. And you know, that's something that I encourage you to do, especially when you're getting started in this really fun medium, because um, I think it lends itself to experimenting. And it also is one of those art types that the more you try to make it look exactly like, oh, I don't know, somebody you see, online do it or exactly like what you just imagine in your mind to be perfect. It seems to me like, just like life, the more you try to do that, the less successful you'll be. And you might get kind of frustrated and we don't want that. Okay, I do see quite a bit of shimmer. So that is gonna be fun. Glad we tried that out. Okay, so let me take a break from mixing and make some adjustments to the camera so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so I decided that on this block of wood, since we're kind of just experimenting and the light's getting really harsh, what we're gonna do is just a simple swipe. And so I'm gonna start um, with a background color, which in this case is gonna be some black. And I'm gonna make sure it coats the entire canvas that I'm gonna work on. And usually if I'm going to um, use one of the colors in the background, I thin it down just a little bit more, but this is the same ratio as all the other paints. And uh, so we'll just see how it works. Sometimes when you thin it down a little bit, it helps the other paint kind of flow or glide across the top. Um, but this is wood, and I was afraid that if I use it thin down, it would really just absorb in there all that much faster. And I can already see that it's really sucking up the wood. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the plain black on top. And then, I'm going to, oh, why don't I just tip out the whole thing in there? I mean, we're having fun, right? And the fun factor 
price-wise about our acrylic paint is that, you know, the ones that I use, like I said, they're about 50 cents a bottle. And of course you can spend a lot more than that, but um, I just like that I can have fun with it. The Floetrol is anywhere between, I think, I paid as low as like $8. But on average, it's about $10 a bottle. Some places it might be as high as $13. Um, you don't really want to pay that much for it. And I just get the smaller container um, because it's easy for me to tow around and pour out of. But you can also get it in a gallon size. And if I were to do that, I would probably pour it into some smaller containers. Another thing I usually like to have is some of the background colors just pre-mixed. And when I get down to the bottom of my paint jars, um, and there's just a little bit in there. I just add the Floetrol right into the bottle, you know, just a little bit, and it just helps my paint go that much further. And then I can squirt it right out of the bottle. Some people online, they use things like ketchup bottles or uh, mustard, like that you get from the dollar store, you know, condiment squeezing bottles. Uh, I met a woman in Del Mar who, she used syringes. And that, she said, was a very controlled way of applying the paint. So kudos to her for figuring that out. Um, I don't know where she got her syringes from, to be honest. I've never seen that at the dollar store. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the paint all the way around the edges of the canvas just to kind of help it flow around. And I'm also seeing, is this paint going to um, soak in any more to the paint, to the piece of wood? And it's not really going anywhere. So that's why I'm going to call that good. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of my yellow. I'm just going to make some random patterns. Got some white. Again, random pattern. And the fun thing is, if you like your random pattern, well, you don't have to do anything more to it. You can just keep it like that. Okay, so I'll add a little bit of my turquoise. And so I'm going to have that set on there for now and if you wanted to like I said you could do your paint pour like this and they call this a clean pour and then you can do all the same things that you normally would do with a paint pour tilt it around let me show you what I like to do I have my clean pour I just take one of my pieces of canvas press it into all that paint and then I can lift it up and get something really cool oh I know it's not very good lighting but there are lots of cells going on there so that's fun oh let's do another one up here press it in there lift it up I love it and I'm getting some really cool stuff happening on the piece of wood too so I was gonna do a swipe I might have to reconsider that Oh, because I like what's going on here. This is just so cool. So, you know what? I think I'm just going to kind of walk away from this right now. So I see a big globby. I'm not going to walk away that fast. Get out of there, poo-poo. And, yeah, I like a lot of stuff that's going on here. So, because it's wood, I'm not too concerned with having a lot of paint sitting on there. And I like what I see so much. Gee, I hate to really even do anything, but when I move the wood, I notice that the paint wants to go a lot of places. That lets me know I've got too much paint on there. And what I'm afraid might happen is that if I let it sit on there, that the paint will actually crack. And that would be no bueno, my friend. So, I'm going to drip some of this off, and that's also going to let some of this paint kind of go over the edge, which always looks really cool. Okay, so I know, again, like I say, poor lighting. Sorry, but uh, sometimes you just got to pour your heart out and do what you want to do. Make some of those dreams that you have come true, right? So... I'm still kind of liking what's going on. It's pretty cool. So what I like to do is center the paint before I kind of change directions. You'll notice as soon as the paint goes over the edge, 
it really stretches out the imagery that you've got going on there. So you can play with that. I like it to go off the edge in a couple different places just to kind of move the eye. So I'm liking, I like this. I like what happened over here. I'm gonna help this. And then I'm gonna run my hand all the way around the edge, kind of stop any drips from continuing to fall down the bottom. Oop, another bloopy. And if you do that, if you run your hand around the edge and underneath it, then the paint is gonna keep, isn't going to keep traveling down there as much. Another thing you can do to kind of set the paint if you really like the way it looks and you don't wanna come back and have it just look totally different, which happens a lot, uh, then you can run your heat gun over the top. A lot of times you'll see also people using their heat gun to bring out the, um, the cells or to pop the air bubbles that are created when you mix up the paints. I don't really like to use the heat gun. So I'm going to call that one pretty darn good. Okay. Pause. pause. All right, so here are those pieces of paper that we dipped in the paper. Oh, that was cute. Okay, so. See what I mean? They're just, they're fun. It's on canvas. I'll be able to do something with them. It's pretty awesome. And then here is what our, our board looks like. And uh, you can see I didn't put any silicone in here. No hair serums or anything like that. But I think that one time when I mixed up that turquoise, I had some in there. A lot of times the Floetrol itself with your paint will create some awesome cells. Um, and then I've also got some pretty cool, what we call lacing going on right over here. So I like what's happening here and I can't wait to see what that turns out like. Okay, I've already mixed up my other paints. So I'm going to get the, all that set up and then we'll go ahead and pour on that and hopefully we can get some, some good lighting before we're done with our shoot here today. I changed up our room here a little bit. And uh, I went ahead and covered two canvases with the sparkly black shimmer paint. So I have an idea um, that I want to try two different ways to make this picture that my cousin sent me. And I'm looking at this paint and I see that it's actually more kind of like a pink color. I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, so here's my idea. I thought I would do... Um, some direct pouring and I'm going to try kind of making some rings here and I've got the gold you see that's cream we don't want that so I've put some of that shimmer red and I hope it dries a little darker I did the orange and I did the gold Okay, and then I'm going to put some black in the middle of all that. And I'm going to put a little bit more black, so I'm going to push that ring out. I think I probably should have put some more of the colors out there. Okay, so let's spread this out in a circle. This cup is a little bit flexible, not much, but a little bit. And what I'm going to try to do is what I would call a ribbon pour. Okay. I'm kind of keeping all the colors on one side and then I'm going to kind of tilt this and I'm going to pour it that wasn't really what I was going for but I am getting that look that I wanted which was a whole bunch of lines going in a circle. Okay, so I don't hate that, which in paint pouring is a good thing. Okay, so if you hate what you're doing, uh, well, that's just kind of part of the process. So if you don't like what happens, try to at least enjoy the fact that you're doing art and you're probably learning something, even if you're just learning how to listen to your artist's intuition and hear it saying, I don't like that. Okay, not everything that we make has to be awesome. 
and cool and like able to sell it. Or, you know, one of the things that I tell people who haven't done a whole lot of art is that if they're doing art and they don't like what they make, they can always give it away and somebody will be really happy about it. Okay, and then I thought to make this kind of stripe in the middle, let's just use up the rest of this paint. And I'm gonna kind of try to do another ribbon pour that goes right across the middle. So we'll see what the end result is. But you know, I've got some cool cells. Ah, bloopy. And um, more. Okay, so I'm gonna try to start kind of like this. I'm gonna bring around. And woo, that's cool. I kind of think that's cool. What do you think? Maybe we'll do one more pass. Mm. I like sound effects when I'm making art, do you? Mm -hmm. One of the ladies that I do some senior art classes with, I can always tell when she's getting into what she's doing because she starts to hum. And that's a good sign. When you're singing while you're making, that is a good sign. Okay, so move this around a little bit just to kind of spread it out. And then I've got an idea for how to kind of make the middle more rounded. And here's another tip. If you have paint that is inconsistent in texture, that's going to create that tension. It's gonna make places where your paint's not gonna to wanna to flow around. Um, so if you're having trouble, like for instance, this black over here isn't wanting to move. If I had some more of that color black, I'd probably put some there uh, because I can see that, like, I can see my canvas and whenever the paint gets over there, it doesn't want to go where I want it to. Okay, so my nice tight line kind of went wonky and that's cool with me because I let go of my expectation and I'm just gonna be happy with whatever turns out here. Um, one of the hard things about doing the tilting is that if you're not paying attention to the whole canvas, you'll, you'll be thinking, oh wow, this area over here looks awesome. And you kind of forget all about this other paint also moving at the same time. Okay, so my idea was put some more black paint here and that's going to self level itself because it's got the flow troll added to it and hopefully it'll bump everything out in more of a concentric circle but you know me I can't just leave well enough alone so I'm just gonna kind of see what I can do here and sorry for the startling dog Okay, um, I think that I'm not going to call this necessarily a success, which means I can kind of do whatever I want to. So I really like this area down here. I'm not saying it's a total loss. I'm just saying that as far as my idea went, it's not really what I want it to look like. And so I, like I said, have already let go of my expectation about what it should look like. And now I'm just going to have some fun. And I'm going to go ahead and just pour this stuff right off the canvas. And because I have those little canvas papers underneath, I'm not really wasting anything. In fact, I could tell myself I'm creating more art by changing what I had before. Okay, and gee, I, I don't really have to care about what's going on here, like I said. Not trying to do anything in particular, so I'm just gonna get my finger right in there and help this paint move where I want it to go, which is off the canvas. Remember, I said if you um, help the paint flow, that's the direction it's gonna go. Okay, so let's see what do we have here. That's different. 
Let's move it this way. See if I can get anything to go down into that corner over there. Because I really do like this feathering look over here. And the rest of it is just kind of weird, which happens sometimes. Okay, so I'm not getting a whole lot of color movement. So let's try some of that. Uh, let's try some of the smooshy. And I'm going to kind of move the paint the direction I want it, the lines to go. Okay, so I've got a little swipe going. And I don't hate that. I don't think it's really all that awesome. Let's set this up to drip. This one has some paint on it, so let's see what happens when I bring this over here. Ooh, I get some of that color, like what I've got fading in. Okay. Let's try scooping some of this back on. And move it back in here. See if any of this will continue to move off. I don't know. I think this one's just going to be kind of like whatever it is. And what it is to me is not really that cool. And that's okay. I'm cool with that. So let's try something else. Okay, so let's try a little swiping with one of these uh, paint chips. Okay, so I'm going to try bringing this in through here. Let's see what happens there. Let's try adding a couple drops and see what those do. It's definitely interesting. Okay, so if I can, I'm going to try to aim those drops in clusters that are not really um, looking like they're terribly planned and also may coincidentally cover up some places that I don't really care for. Let's try to get one there. Let's try to get one here, and since I've got some black on there, I'm gonna dab it. And now I'm gonna walk away from this canvas, okay? So like I said, sometimes you just don't get what you expected. And then you have to go into plan B, which is go back to having fun. All right, I like that. Okay, here's my other idea I had. Um, let's see. I thought it would be fun to do a swipe. So this is what I was going to do the first time when we got really fun and took our clean pour and uh, turned it into our end result, basically. So I'm going to take some paint and spread it out there. And it really doesn't matter how this goes on as far as I can tell. Um, I'm gonna put some over here, and put some over here, put some over here, maybe kind of going off the edge. Okay, so I've got three spots of turquoise. Now I'm gonna choose a side to swipe from. And I guess I'll put the bluish black color here. Okay, and I'm going to move it towards the direction of my swipe as I empty the cup. And then before it all runs off the back edge, I've got a piece of plastic came with my canvas. And I'm going to use this to pull that black paint that I just put on there across the canvas. Okay, you could use a uh, piece of paper. You could use a paper towel roll, which I happen to have, okay? But I like this because I can see what's happening, and I love swipes because I always get these surprise pops of color, and also because wherever that piece of plastic goes towards, I know I'm going to get some cool paint, something cool there. Something I don't hate here. Uh, let's see. Something I'm not crazy about, but don't hate it as much, I guess. Now, <laughs> here, 
And then we have the lid block and a whole bunch of other pieces of paper. So I had fun sharing with you. And uh, if you like this video, there's not really another one like it on my channel. You can check out my daughter Sunday's paint pour under the fun day paint pour. And um, if you like scrapbooking, I've got tons of things about scrapbooking and card making. So subscribe, like, follow me on Facebook, Craft with Anna every day if you want to in comfort of your own home. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.